Good morning. <laughs> How is everybody doing all right? Would you please stand for a gathering song? belong. In the gospel today, you're going to hear a very familiar phrase, but you might hear it in old ways that are not good news. It's Jesus saying to you, you must take up your cross and follow me, right? 
I, when I heard that as a child, it sounded like get ready for lots of suffering. Or maybe melodrama. Make sure everybody around you knows <laughs> the suffering you're enduring because of their annoying traits. It's certainly not as trivial as that. What does it mean to take up your cross? The cross itself has uh, vertical and horizontal bars. Just the cross itself as a kind of archetype suggests that things that appear to be opposite belong, and they meet in the middle. My mother taught me as a child before I, I knew my alphabet, but I didn't know how to read but I knew what the letters were and what their names were. And when she taught me to do this to start a prayer, she said, what letter does that make? It's an X. And she knew I loved pirates. And I had a book that had an island with a dotted line and an X. And that X marks the spot of what? What kind of treasure? I'm looking for another word. Buried. buried, there it is. It's, you can't see the gold because it's buried. The treasure's inside you. Your eyes are round. You can look out of them when they're open. You can look inward when they're closed. You can see what's in you. And when we want to talk to God inside of us, we do this. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We make an X that marks the spot. And then we say, hello in there. I want to talk to you. It's the same thing Eucharist accomplishes. We swallow the body of Christ, and it's inside of us. Let's then ask the Holy Spirit to open our ears, our minds, our imaginations to hear good news today. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are king of our hearts. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are king of heaven and earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Then let's rejoice. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory. 
Look upon us, God, creator and ruler of all things, that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated and listen to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right. Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. For the Lord in the land of the living, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord because He has heard my voice. In supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me. The day I go, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The course of Encompass me, the snares of the netherworld. She stopped on me, I fell into distress and sorrow. And I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, save my life. Merciful, the Lord 
my feet from stumbling I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, you are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this, he turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life 
for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The good news of Jesus Christ. This weekend, our country and people all over the world have been a part of this 20th commemoration, remembering together uh, the events of 9-11-2001. Uh, uh, Maybe some of you went to some public event that brought people together to do that. I didn't, but I watched a lot of television and I, I particularly like first-person narrative stories. I, any of the little documentaries that just focused on some one person and said, this is what was happening and this is how it went, and people climbing down the steps trying to get out of the building and all of that. I watched a lot of it. Of course, the journalists, many of them are based in New York, and a lot of them were right there in the middle of it and have their own guttural responses to what went on that day because they were trying to explain it to us while they were living it. Last night, kind of near the end of the night, and of course the East Coast is you know, three hours different from us, I saw Lester Holt on the uh, NBC Evening News. And their team had put together something that was sort of their attempt to kind of bring some meaning and closure to the, the whole thing. And they chose, do you remember that all the members of Congress on the steps of the Capitol singing Amazing Grace. Do you remember that that happened at all? It did. Right after, I don't know if it was the day of or just when, but one of the things that happened right around September 11th, I guess once they understood that the Capitol was safe from attack, they gathered there, every member of Congress, and they sang Amazing Grace on the steps. If you forgot or never saw it, find it on YouTube. <laughs> It's worth seeing all of our legislators at once singing a hymn. Then they juxtaposed that with images of January 6th. And Americans deciding that they needed to take violent means to oppose the will of other Americans. And the idea was, once upon a time 20 years ago, we were united. What happened? And if we knew what happened, could we find our way home? It might even be looking, worth looking that up. It was on the NBC Evening News just last night. Take up your cross. I'm a Dominican. We're the order of preachers, OP, or the initials behind by name. We were founded at the same time as the Franciscans. Both of us were attempts to reform the church from inside, which is the project of every last person in the room, isn't it? <laughs> Would you like your husband or your wife to reform you? Or your kids or your neighbors? You know that really that work has to, if it's going to have any depth, it has to come from within. There might be some help from outside, but that's really interior work. Francis is famous for a phrase that I paraphrase. Preach the gospel at all times. You know the rest of it? Use words when necessary. He was not big on words. He was much more on action and compassionate service. Dominic, on the other hand, used words. And Jesus is the word made flesh. Nothing wrong with words. Preachers use words. Have any of you had one of those tests done 
23andMe or Ancestry.com? Have you? Was it fun? Did you learn anything? A lot. A lot? <laughs> you didn't get one of those surprise paternity things? <laughs> One of the things, I remember watching one of those commercials, and it was some guy that always had a great time on St. Patrick's Day celebrating his heritage. Do you remember that one? Only to find out that he was more German than Irish. <laughs> and then at the end of the ad, he's, wear, he's wearing lederhosen, and <laughs> he's celebrating Oktoberfest. But those tests tell us that we, we might think of ourselves as one thing, or primarily one thing, but even the one thing that is our flesh might be made of all kinds of things that we didn't even know were there. I haven't had one of those done. And I, my mother's side was Hungarian, and my, father, my last name is English. My father's side is English. And there, there, there was a St. Patrick's Day, but there wasn't a Hungarian Day at school. <laughs> and there really wasn't even an English Day. So I didn't feel very ethnic. I felt like a combination of things growing up. Well, in the, in the mystery of who and what we are, we are Christian people, and we're told by Jesus to take up our cross. In the first reading at, at this liturgy, we had Isaiah saying to us, If anyone wishes to oppose me, let's appear together. Well, I haven't done ancestry, but I, I love words and I love the etymology of words, so my favorite site is Online Etymology Dictionary. It's the, it's the way you learn about the heritage of a word, the way that you might do a DNA test to learn about the heritage of your flesh. Where did that word come from? How did it get... Who decided that that word and those sounds were going to symbolize this thing? To oppose comes from to position, to put in a place, to position yourself like baseball players on the diamond. If you're the third baseman, your, your position is third base. So to oppose a thing is to um, put it in its place, but that word has a connotation of in its place against the place I'm in. So I watch a lot of football, and it's the first week of the NFL season. Think of the defensive line and the offensive line, especially if they're on one of the yard lines that goes all the way across the field, like the 50. If the ball happens to be at the 50, some people line up on one side and some on the other, and they oppose each other. They position themselves opposite each other for a purpose. It's a game, but they're opposing each other in the energies that they spend. And Isaiah says, if you want to oppose me, let's appear together. He goes on to say, if you want to dispute my right, then confront me. Confront Co means to be with, like a community that you're in right now. You're with this people, trying to be in union with them. To confront means to be with in front of. Well, the defensive players and the offensive players in the football game are in front of one another, but they're not co-anything. <laughs> they're not together in and being opposed. They might be together with the ones on their side of the line. And I think that's why it felt natural for Democrats and Republicans and independents to sing a hymn together after 9-11. Why is that? Well, grief brings people together across positional boundaries, for one thing. But we also had an obvious opponent. Somebody foreign did this to us. And it's one way of feeling united is to have a common enemy, isn't it? And here comes Jesus. And what does he say about enemies? Oh, don't mutter it. It's too important. <laughs> what does Jesus say about enemies? Love your enemies. 
which is the rub, isn't it? In the, the gospel today, Peter thinks he's doing a helpful thing when Jesus sounds like he's going to blow past all the warning signs and go right to Jerusalem. And he even warns that when we get there, this is what's going to happen to me. This is how I will be opposed physically, violently, to the death. Of course, Peter then asserts himself and feels the need to tell Jesus what to do. May I see a show of hands? Who has not done that? <laughs> Who in the room has not ever told God what God ought to do? At that moment, Jesus had to say, get behind me, Satan, for now you're not thinking in God's ways, you're thinking of man's ways. You're not being helpful at the moment. The, the cross is a set of perpendicular lines, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the Mass, it's, it can be a, an archetype, a symbol of the necessity of drawing together opposites and allowing them to come together in the middle of you, especially if you're wearing a cross. I've got one under all this religious clothing right now. In fact, it hangs on me. Um, you are very convenient. Yeah. Can, you, can the camera see her cross? Can you? I don't know if you would call that a pendant, but what it's doing is behaving as a pendant. A pendulum. Any of you carpenters? You know when you use a level? You know, they have those little water bubbles that, that are in there that makes you... Well, another way to find the level of a thing is with a pendant. You tack something to the roof and let that thing hang down, and it will tell you the true perpendicular line of the, toward the horizon because gravity will solve that problem. So to, for something to be perpendicular, it has to do with balance. You know, I, I, even, I even learned, I don't pay much attention to the zodiac, but are anybody in here Libras? You know, what's the symbol of a Libra? It's a scale, a balance. And equilibrium has Libra in the middle of it. To be a person who has an equilibrium is a person who lives in balance. And in Hebrew, balance is related to wisdom. A person who's wise is one who's able to balance, juggle, if you will, hold in a balance all the contradictory things that life brings us, including opponents or enemies. I wasn't allowed in my family to use the E word. I grew up in the segregated South. We weren't allowed to use the N word either. But the E word was just as bad. We don't have enemies in this house. That's what I was taught. That one is a really sweet word. And that word, you know how sometimes A at the beginning of the word means not? Like amoral means not moral? In enemy, the E does the same thing. It may, means not a me, not friend. The anti-friend, the one who I will not have as my friend, enemy. Jesus said to us, turn that on its head because I'm not going to Jerusalem to oppose those we'll find there. I'm trying to reconcile opposites. Re means again, and concil has to, it's a circle. To bring back into the circle. When you reconcile with anybody, you're bringing them back into the circle. Okay. By the way, this is all recorded. <laughs> if you cared to look at it again, if it's too much all at once, uh, it'll be on the website. You didn't know you were going to get a whole like vocabulary test this morning. But it's at the heart of our faith. The pendant that you're wearing, because it at least acts like one, whether you think of it that way or not, it lands right on your breastbone, right near your heart, and it defines who you are. If you're true to that sign, it means I'm a person who will love an enemy. I'm the person who won't even allow myself to tolerate the idea of having an enemy 
because my enemy and my friend are both part of me, the way that I might be both German and Irish at the same time, or Hungarian and English, or anything else. When Jesus says to us, take up our cross and follow me, he's not saying, trudge through life and make everybody know how put upon you are. He's saying, move through your life like I move through mine. And don't let death define you, because it will try to. But you, will, you are already immortal, whether you wrote know it or not. Death doesn't get to be the final word. So don't be afraid of that getting in the way. I love the people that we're going to oppose. I would rather be with them and confront to be with in front of where we might have a conversation. The irony of what happened on the Capitol steps is that building is meant to be a place where people get together in a circle, where they work things out by confronting them, speaking with in front of, not behind the back. If we want to be a more united people, and Catholic means universal, it's on us to be people who don't look across at someone else as though they're on the other side <laughs> of the 50-yard line, and we must push against them and they against us. We're just called to more than that. And oh, by the way, if it just feels like, oh, that's just too hard, oh, how am I going to do that? I don't have the strength. Isn't that what the Eucharist is for? It's food for the journey, it's nourishment, it's strength, and it's available to you in only a few minutes, as soon as I stop talking. <laughs> We're going to go into the liturgy of the Eucharist, and you're going to have the opportunity to take the, the, the love of the universe and swallow it and let it dissolve into your tissues and into your imagination in the way that you do everything. Are you up to the task? Let's do it. Shall we stand? Why don't you read that? May the, Lord. May the Lord incline his ear to us as we raise our voices in supplication and prayer. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For the church and its leaders, that they will model the self-sacrificial love of Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations of the world, that they will protect the precious gift of life, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who died from the attacks on September 11th, that God gives them eternal peace and heals the grief in the hearts of those that miss them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us joined in prayer today, that God may inspire our prayer and transform our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord watch over and protect all those who are ill, especially Shane Huffman, Mason Baca, Stephen Baca, Helen Lealiones. May all caregivers feel your love and protection, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord receive all those who have died especially Martha Towell, and comfort those who are grieving for them, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, hear our prayers as we call upon your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. And we have one special blessing to extend today. Maria Kylie, we need you up front. Where are you? The lady in the yellow. You're a lady in the yellow. Would you come out here? 86 today, right? Yes, sir. Come this way. Can we have a song? Hey to you, happy birthday. You don't sing, we sing to you. <laughs> happy birthday, dear Maria. Happy birthday to you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay. Sure. Please be seated. Father. 
the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our praise and the Lord is over the Lord, may the working of this heavenly gift take possession of our minds and our bodies. May its effects, and not our own desires, always prevail in us. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It it's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. We not, while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Sana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy these gifts by sending your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body. It will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. It's the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again, until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, with St. Pius, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we'll always be free from sin, safe from every distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Dear friends, let us share with one another the sign of Christ's love and his peace. God bless. Thank you. Thank you for your help. the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all who are called to the supper of the Lamb. from which 
Thank you. 
Lord, may the working of this heavenly gift take full possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires will always prevail within us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I did mention in passing during the homily that if I was throwing a lot of information at you all at once, and if any of it was something you'd like to hear a second time, when does this get posted anyway? It's on from now on. Oh, it's on already? Yeah. Sweet. Can't be fat. <laughs> um, I'm a preacher, and I used to travel uh, before the pandemic, and since the pandemic, I've done a whole lot more things online, including an online study word by word of Mark's gospel, which we're using all the way until the end of November. If you'd like to do a kind of online Bible study at your own pace, it's just sitting there on my YouTube channel. It's just my name, Father Nathan, on YouTube. It's free. I also did one in the Easter season on John's gospel, the whole of John's gospel. I had about 60 to 5 to 75 people from around the world taking part. So you'll see their little faces in the boxes that you see, you know, when you do a Zoom teaching. That's there, it's available to you. And then um, I'm about to start one on the letters of Paul, not all of which were written by Paul, which is tricky. Some are written after he died. So we're gonna do a study on first, second, and third Paul, even though they're not really called that. That's gonna start next month. If you'd like to take part, you could go to my website, which is my name, nathan-castle.com. What's the website name? nathan-castle.com and you could go to the little you know the little envelope thing that is an email and you could say I want to know more about this and I could see that you get informed and if you'd like to do it you'd have all the information is there anything else that needs to be announced nothing nothing then our work is done here the Lord be with you and with your spirit may Almighty God bless us all Father Son and Holy Spirit Amen. X marks the spot celebration is now ended. Let us go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ and have a beautiful day. Thanks be to God. In my life I want to follow Jesus Christ God's only son He gives life For the way that is narrow And provides For all who would come Yes, una gibi Amane da capeco Yes, una gibi Amane da capeco And raga mi da ca Minai da capeco Raga mi da ca Minai in my time of trouble and sorrow, still I choose to follow his right. If I die today or tomorrow, nothing to lose, cause he Shout his praise from my heart without shame. He is the one, the hope of all nations. He will save all who trust in his name. Yes, una gibi amane da capeco. Yes, una gibi amane da capeco. Raga mi da ca, minai da capeco. Yes, una gibi amane da cabeco.